Here are some tricks to stop being the nice guy. There's nothing wrong with being nice, but being too nice will never stimulate the feelings of attraction that you want. Nice guys tend to be afraid, so they constantly ask permission or ask for approval, and it never looks confident. For example, you're trying to get a girl out on a date. I was wondering if you wanted to go out later this week. Yeah, we definitely can. When are you free like this week? Friday or Saturday? Okay, awesome. What would you like to do? And then they get ghosted. As a man, you have to take the lead. Constantly asking questions subcommunicates that you do not trust yourself and you don't believe in your choices. This kills attraction. Instead, do this. Hey, what have you been up to? And she gives you some detail. Do you go back and forth a couple times? I saw this place that reminded me of you. I was thinking we hit it up Saturday night. And she tells you she's free to go. You set the date. Making suggestions shows others you have guts. That you are not afraid to take the lead. Those are very rare traits that make you attractive. Don't you agree that there is way more negativity in the world today than there ever was? I heard this story the other day, this true story that I believe everyone should apply to their life if they want to instantly improve the quality of their lives. These students in this math class, they come in, sit down like it's a normal day. The teacher starts putting math problems on the board. Nine times one, nine. Nine times two, 18. Nine times three, 24. Nine times four, 36. As he continues to put the rest of the problems on the board, the students start chuckling behind his back. One of the students finally speaks up. He's like, teacher, teacher, uh, nine times three is, is not 24, it's, it's 27. And the rest of the kids burst out into laughter. And he goes, I did that on purpose. The lesson that you all can take with you for the rest of your lives is that people are so quick to point out your flaws, then they are silent when you are actually doing things that are good and right for the world. So I challenge you to just give someone one compliment today, just one, and chances are that's gonna make someone's entire day. Do you wanna know one of the best responses to give to a hater? So listen to this. Haters are only saying or doing what they're doing to you because you're taking action, right? Making that video, you're writing that book, maybe even starting that business. You taking action is hitting that hater deep, so deep that it's causing some insecurity or self-doubt to be pulled out. And that is the key to this response. And every single person that you will ever meet in life their words and their actions are telling you something about themselves. They're telling you that you could never be successful just because in here, they're telling themselves that about themselves. So here's what you say. For example, if they're just like, you'll never be successful at this. Just say, hey, that says way more about you than it does me. You could also just tell them to go fuck themselves. Tell me and the team what your favorite response to haters is in the comments. Here are three things to do with your body that make you look more attractive instantly. Number one is to expose your neck more. It has been said that during conversation, if you tilt your head and show your neck more, then the person you're talking to feels like they are bonded and connected to you more. It also shows that you have nothing to hide. Tip number two is to wear the color red more often. A study was done where a man had pictures taken of him multiple times in different colored shirts. These pictures were shown to a test group and then they were asked, if you had $100 to take any of these people on a date, who would you spend the most on and why? They didn't know that there was the same person just in different colored shirts. And you know what happened? The group said on average that they would spend $25 more on the red shirt person than any other colored shirt. So add red into your wardrobe. The third and final tip is that when you're talking, show your palms more. In the book Love Signals, it said that the back of your hands symbolize a threat versus the palm of your hands shows openness and nothing to hide. Something you should never do in bars and nightclubs. When I was in club promoting, there were common signs that showed if someone was high status or low status instantly. And these all come out before you even talk to somebody. You will see multiple people doing this every single time you go out. And one of the biggest indicators that someone is low status is when they are standing up and they're holding a drink right here. The reason behind this is fascinating. When we feel uncomfortable in certain moments, then our natural hard wearing makes us protect the spot that's most vulnerable. And where's the most vulnerable part of our body? It's right here where all of our internal organs are because it's not protected by any bones. So when we're uncomfortable, we tend to cover this spot. So the next time you're out, remember to be open with your body language. If you're sitting in a chair, sprawl your arms out. When you're standing up and talking to people, use your hands, express your hands more. And this will make you look instantly more attractive. A common habit people do that literally is anxiety. Part one, thinking that everyone is secretly judging you. According to social psychologists, this is known as the spotlight effect. It has been said that wherever we go, we tend to believe there's a spotlight constantly shining on us, highlighting our mistakes and our flaws for the entire world to see. It's been known to even drive some people mad. But here's what we don't realize. Everyone has a form of the spotlight effect. Most people tend to see their flaws first before their strength. Chances are, if you believe that someone is judging you or you believe that they're seeing and noticing your flaws and you're building up to be some 
big person in your head, then most likely they're sitting there doing the exact same thing as you, wondering if you're noticing their flaws and they're building you up to be this big person in their own head. So to alleviate the spotlight effect, take your focus away from the flaws and put them on your strengths. Give that person a sincere compliment. For example, I can't believe I'm saying this, but you looked really good in that outfit last night. Here's one of the best tricks to use to take your flirting game to the next level. But just a warning, this might be a little manipulative. So if you can handle that, then let's move on. The best example I can think of is Romeo and Juliet. And I know, I know, Romeo and Juliet in the dating community has been beaten to a pulp. But I promise that you have not heard this one yet. And this concept is known as the barrier. So in the script, Romeo and Juliet were not allowed to be together because the families hated each other. So when Juliet was like, Dad, I love Romeo. He was like, there's no way you're going to be with it. But that right there, what did that produce? And that right there is the barrier. When the families told them they can't be together, it made them want each other 10 times more. So much that they killed themselves. So if you want to make them chase you, then use the barrier. Here's an example. You need to build it up. You're talking to them and you're just like, gosh, like, you're perfect. Like, you're amazing. You're everything I've wanted. But we can't be together. And they're like, what? Why? And then you mess around a little bit. Pick out some like ugly person wherever you're at. Like that person over there has just been checking you out this entire time. I, just, I can't do it to them.